Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. A spokeshave is an incredibly fun tool to play with, so today we're gonna make one. Let's have some fun. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun. Firewood, Ipe, oak, rosewood. Let's do rosewood. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. The more I use this rosewood, the more I love it. It is incredibly fun to work. It is, it's very dense, and so you need to have a sharp iron, otherwise it just skates across the top. But it finishes up beautifully, and it works amazingly well. The grain on it is a little bit sketchy, but uh, holds together um, fairly well. So to make this whole thing, I'm going to be following the plans from Veritas, and it calls for a piece that is so wide, by so long, by about that thickness. <laughs> and uh, you can fudge it a little bit, but uh, the, it needs to be pretty close to those sizes. So I'm going to be following it as closely as I can. So we're going to take this to a rough shape. Um, thankfully, the piece was already the proper thickness, so I didn't have to work too much on that. You need to cut out notches for the blade to go into, and the ends of the blade are rounded. So we're going to be cutting those in to be the exact same depth as the thickness of the iron, and this will actually create the rounded edge. And then we're going to come with a smaller bit just inside of that and drill in farther. This will be what we actually cut the threads into. And the plans specify all the thread sizes, as well as provide the tap. The tap then provides the threads that the depth adjuster will ride into. We also now need to cut out the whole recess for the blade. And so this is a section that goes all the way forward to the mouth, uh, as well as back from hole to hole. They do specify that the front edge of it needs to be at a slight angle, and they measure out exactly what that angle is, so you can mark out to that and then chamfer it from corner to corner. For the escapement where the chips will actually come out, we need to chop back. So I made several stop cuts along it, and then we can come into the chisel and remove most of the junk between them. I highly enjoy this step, and there's just something about removing large chunks with a chisel that is very, very enjoyable. And we'll be doing that a few times in this. We're going to get it close to the size we want, and then I can come in with the rabbited block plane and get it right down to the line, and then smooth it all out with the file and rasp. And I have a nice escapement for it. Now we need to connect the dots between the two circles we created so that the uh, iron can fit into that and slide down. We need to cut it down to the depth that the iron is thick. And so I'm going to come into the chisel bevel down and get rid of most of this. I can check it with the depth gauge to make sure it's where I want to. But hey, I've got this little router from Veritas. It's a cute little thing. And I generally don't use it much. But in this case, that actually is a great little use for it. I can make sure that the bottom is precisely the correct depth so that that the iron doesn't ever go down any farther than it should. The mouth on this actually has a small bit of brass. It's a wear plate, so you don't wear out the front of it too quickly. One of the problems with a lot of the old wooden ones is that the mouth is worn out. And so we need to actually recess this down a little bit into the body. This is into the surface we created that small chamfer into. And I wanted to make sure it was flat and match that chamfer all the way along, so I brought in my long router plane that allows me to reference more of the surface. I love using this one for tenons because it has a longer arm away from the blade itself so I can get all the way out on the end. And again, we want to smooth that out and make sure it fits in there and is nice and flush with the wood on either side. We can push it in, make sure everything is where we want it to be, but now we need to actually attach this. The kit comes with two flathead screws so that we can drive them in. And these flatheads also have standard slots, so no Phillips, no square, but it, I think I like the look of it a little bit better. <laughs> so we're going to drill through the brass with the larger head, and then we are going to use the Yankee bit to drill in the smaller threaded section. I'm going to get one of them in and tighten it up without sinking it down, and this will allow me to drill the second one precisely where it needs to be. Once we get it drilled out, then we can countersink it and crank them down so that they are clocked, because we all know if you're going to use a slotted screw, it needs to be clocked. <laughs> the next thing we need to do is actually um, hit the edge and put it to a 45 so that the iron doesn't quite touch it. We want a little bit of space there. You, basically, the idea is a, a thick piece of, of cardstock should be able to slide in between there. And so we can file the brass down until we get that where we want. At this point, it's basically functional, uh, but we want to make it look pretty. Um, a lot of this you could just shape by hand and eye, uh, but it, the plans does come with a, a set of designs so you can and sculpt it out. And so for some of these I did by eye and some of them I followed the plans. Now some people ask me why don't you use a spokeshave to make the handles. Well 
I, I really don't like using a spoke shape to make a spoke shape, but actually in this case, um, the, the shorter ones, I'll, I'll do it both directions. Uh, anything shorter than about four inches, I find it just about the same amount of time to do it with a rasp as it would do with a spoke shape. A uh, spoke shape gives you a cleaner surface immediately off of the tool, but with a rasp, I have to do the rasp and then come in with the file. Um, so for most of this, I'm going to do with the file, but some of it I'm going to come in and clean up the rasp uh, with the with the spoke shape. <laughs> <laughs> and a spoke shave is really good for doing those compound areas and getting into odd spaces, but the rasp and file are better for getting into tight areas. For a lot of this, there's a, a small, tiny curve, and so it's easier to come in and chisel out the majority of the waste. Uh, for some of the spaces, you're only taking an eighth inch to a, a quarter inch off, but in this section, you're coming down a half inch or more, so it's easier to pop in. And Oh no, that one's splitting out a little farther than I want, but actually it split out right to the line, so it was... Um, I was close. <laughs> I love this big rat tail file. I don't know where I found this one, but I use it quite often, and it got me the radius I'm looking for. To clean that up, I can just come in with a chisel and ride the bevel and scrape it down and get a really nice clean cut right off of that. We're going to do a lot more little detailing. Um, on the back side of this, it needs to be rounded out. It doesn't need to be rounded out. Nothing at this point needs to be done. It's all kind of for the look and the feel of it. But a rasp makes a very quick work of getting that to the right shape. Come in with a file, smooth it out, and this has a slight indent in the middle and curvature on it. On the back of the escapement, we're going to lighten that up a little bit. Um, anytime you can get rid of a little bit of material, it just makes the whole tool a little lighter, as well as provides more area for the chips to come out. We're going to do a lot of little detailing, coming in with small files and adding little chamfers and, and uh, shaping it just for the look of it. But for the handles, we don't want those to be blocky. We cut them to the rough square shape, but now we're going to come back through and plane them down to right where we want to round all the edges and then hit them with a card scraper and the card scraper gives you an amazing surface um, being able to round it over and shape it in um, I, I love the way it works especially this one from bearcat woodworks um, it's a chair shaped card scraper so it's designed for chair legs and spindles and i love pulling it out for these nice rounded shapes and it just works every time and especially on this rosewood it scrapes beautifully it is an incredibly nice wood to finish for the ends of these, rather than rounding them off, I'm putting a very heavy chamfer right on the end and uh, shaping that to just look and feel good. Um, I like having a, a hard chamfered look, um, but anywhere I can, I want to just kind of smooth it out. I'm going to be feeling it all over, make sure there's no rough spots, and I'll rub it for a little while and then go at it with a file and then rub it for a little while. And it's amazing what you can feel that you can't see. Once it has all been shaped, now we can turn our attention to the iron and sharpen that up. Um, I like using vice grips to hold it in place. I've got a couple videos showing how to do that, um, but it's great to hold these little things that are difficult to, and you can use the vice grip as a, uh, as a honing guide for it. These thread into the body, and the spoke shave then pushes up against these, so you can move those nuts on the back to actually push the spoke shave blade in and out, and that actually adjusts the depth from the back. So those posts thread into the blade itself, and then into the brass pieces in the back. And then there are locking nuts that then go down and lock into the depth nuts. And I was having a lot of fun with this. This one just came out really well. I can take really nice heavy shavings and get down to shape and then slide it over and take a nice thin shaving and clean it up. Uh, this one really worked out well and it surprised me how smooth it came right off of the tool. And of course, this is wood by right, so homemade boiled linseed oil. Uh, and especially with this rosewood, it just, it, the color on this is incredible. And the, the brass and the rosewood together it is an amazing look that I, that I love. Um, so yes, um, I put a generous coat on there, let it soak up as much as it wants, wipe off the excess, and then I'll apply paste wax and polish it down. Let the paste wax sit and cure for a while, uh, and then polish off the excess. And you get this really nice sheen surface that I, I love the feel of it. So the brass spacers can go in, the blade slides in, and then the locking nuts in the back, and there you have it. There is our Veritas marking gauge kit. <laughs> I really had fun with this one. Um, I've made quite a few of them, and I'm looking forward to making more in the future. So, yeah, happy. And, man, I love that rosewood. So pretty. So there you have it. Spoke shape, rosewood. I love this one. Uh, this is It's surprisingly heavy. Rosewood is a nice, dense wood. And uh, came out very, very well. I am actually looking forward to using this one. Having that wear plate on the front, this should actually be a really nice, good... I don't know if it will replace my 51, but it basically it's the same spot. So, I don't know. 
know, we'll see what happens. And the uh, depth adjustment mechanism on this one, it's really kind of cool having those nuts that you can move up and down. I wasn't quite sure how I'd like them at the beginning and they were a little bit fiddly to play with until I figured it out and it was like, oh yeah, this actually goes out really well. So I, I like those. If you'd like to see the kit, I'll leave a link to it down below. It isn't sponsored. I bought this with my own money. The link down below isn't even affiliate link. So I just want to show people I like making tools and this is a fun one. I've made a bunch of spoke shaves in the past and I'm looking forward to making more in the future. If there's something you'd like to see me do or you have a question, thought, idea, or something I should learn, let me know that. Throw it down in the comments down below. I love reading through those and I do learn a lot from that, so thank you. On top of that, we have all of these people over on the side. Those are all the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon. Without patrons and members on the channel, uh, we wouldn't be here. We are completely sponsored by you guys. Without you, Wood by Right wouldn't exist. So if you'd like to keep us going and help us stay doing this and pay for the lights to turn on, then think about becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on the channel. We do have special perks for both, and it means more than I can say anytime I see someone join. So thank you for that. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. You know, they call it a spoke shave, but honestly, this is the real reason why I can get such a nice shave on top of my head. I can really get every single hair. Wait. I just called myself a spoke. If it's actively in use, it's a speaking shave. <laughs> and if it's going to be used in the future, it's a will-have-been-spoking speaking shave.